Hey, Foot Clan. Today's episode is brought to you by one of our favorite apps. It's the Sports Manias app. The Sports Manias app is your ultimate fantasy football tool. You can check in every single day on your fantasy teams, on your favorite teams, get updates and articles, scores. It's real-time news. It's used by every single one of us here at the Footballers. I use it every day. I can import my teams. I can see my news. I absolutely love it. You've got to download the free Sports Manias app today. Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Happy Friday. <laughs> you keep waiting. The, the week. The week is the almost week is flown here. by. It is November 20th, and it is Double Stuff himself, Jason Moore, and myself, Andy Holloway, here again. We're the Fantasy Footballers. Mike is out. But this is the last day without Mike. So all of you who are going through beard withdrawals, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I understand is a severe issue. Yeah. Uh, you know what someone sent me was they sent me the Instagram with uh, the Disney Man Bun Instagram account. <laughs> and they're expecting they expected Mike to come through there. So Mike is – they haven't captured him yet. But right. somewhere Mike I is did not wearing know a Disney were, Man Bun. I did not know that that was a thing. I did find out. Yeah, it's just pictures of guys with man buns. At Disneyland. That you, for real? That's, That's all a it real is. Thing? That's a real That's thing. That's amazing. I did find out that you can purchase a clip-in man bun <laughs> at your at, at your color tone. Uh, as a Groupon. Yes. So You can Groupon a man bun. So That's some free advertising for clip-on man buns, <laughs> uh, but they need it. Yeah. So, so hey, we've got a jam-packed show. I think this one's just going to go over. So, you know, I'm so sorry out there. You're going to have to listen to more of us today. Yeah. And we've got we've got news and notes. We've got all your injury reports. We've got nine games to go over in the matchup section for our fantasy forecast. We got the daily dose with Fantasy Sports Network's Chris Meany on the show today. We got some mailbag, and uh, I'm sure we'll muse on something ridiculous as well. Oh well, if you know, we we need like a a, a camera with audio just going, you know, Big Brother style in our studio at all times because we do? I th I think people would have been really entertained at our. Uh, screaming and yelling match over over uh one oh uh, gus bradley last gus night bradley yes yeah we i disagree I, we well, disagree it's just you're not in a good position to argue i'm in a very good position because to argue you that gus bradley... lost the argument <laughs> by by the by what happened in real life so, so you're the whole debate is jason thinks that gus bradley is a bad coach is okay that's not what you said no, that you is said exactly he made a bad choice well, in yes. the game last night. Bad bad coaches do those things. <laughs> That's what they do. Because, they make bad choices. He, because he didn't kick or he didn't go for it on fourth and inches. He kicked a field goal to go up six. Not only that, but also because he ran the ball with Denard Robinson. Okay, let's of focus here though. My whole point, the whole big argument and screaming match was the fact that Jaguars won. They did what ex they did what he hoped they'd do, which is to stop them from scoring a touchdown at the end of the game. And they won based on his call. I get that. Quick question of the day. Here it is. Quick question of the day Wait. says, no, I got it for you, Andy. Has any coach ever made bad decisions and won a game? I Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, except for this decision worked out, which, <laughs> which by default makes it a good decision in All some right. sense of the word. Okay. So you're just going to ignore the running... Denard Robinson five or six times on inside of the 10. I think Gus Bradley is a motivator, an optimist, a perfect coach for the Jaguars, and not a tactician. I and would, I think he's made some bad decisions. And I have no problem admitting he made a bad decision. I will not say kicking the field goal is a bad decision because they won the game by stopping the touchdown. All right. Well. Yeah. All right. We'll get into more of that. If you want to follow the show, you can do so on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Hey, and there is a little button at the top of the page that says shirts. And we just came out with a new shirt. We came out with one that is called. Wow. That was as high as I Wow. That was impressive. Thanks. And it is a uh, it is a Foot Clan Awakens shirt. So you can kind of figure that one out. But if you want one of those, grab it. I know a lot of people were sad they missed out on the Back to the Future shirt. So we threw one up for uh, the Foot Clan Awakens. Yeah. So who doesn't love Star Wars? Yeah, there you go. So you can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can visit us on jointhefoot.com. Join our fantasy football community on there. Where we are, uh, we're always on there. We're always talking. It's fun. We had a, a exclusive show 
that we re- record every week that goes on there, and that happens. That's pretty fun yesterday. Oh. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so, I liked it. Anyway. All right, quick question of the day. It, it, it deals with the game last night, and we'll talk about that, I'm sure. Two of the last four games Blake Bortles has had under 200 yards. He hasn't had three touchdowns since week six. He's only got He only had one TD last night, and it was a gift because Rashad Green, who we talked about on the show, ran a punt back to the five-yard line and gave, him, gave Julius Thomas a touchdown. Can fantasy owners actually trust Bortles as their playoff quarterback? For context, his playoff schedule is Indianapolis, Atlanta, and New Orleans. Um, the answer I believe is absolutely yes. I think that you can trust him. You saw in the game last night, I realized, and, and, and I'm, I'm not going to, you know, unequivocally, he had a bad fantasy game. You know, he threw one pick and one touchdown. That's never going to get it done from a fantasy perspective, but he played well last night. He had, you know, almost 250 yards. He was, he was marching down the field. Every time they got inside the 10, Gus Bradley, made bad calls and they didn't throw the you know they didn't throw any any red zone passes that could have scored touchdowns but that's not what they always do necessarily and I do believe because of the matchups especially week 16 with the New Orleans Saints I believe that you can trust him for that match problem is you got to get there you got to get to week 16 well I'm not saying that you start him from here on out, he is still a streamer. I'm saying that you will you will put him in the lineup. I think there's on a, week sixteen. There's a large amount of people that have moved from Bortles the streamer to Bortles the starter every week. That's a great point. Bortles is not an every week starter. He is uh, a guy that is uh, matchup dependent. Uh, you know, week fifteen against Atlanta, the week before that championship week, I absolutely would not play him. Atlanta has a, a really nice cover three defense that I don't think Bortles is going to deal with well. I mean, you just have to play those matchups, but I'll play him in week 16 for sure over most options. Okay. All right. Let me see. I'm going I'm to check something here. Hold on a second. Uh, Delaney Walker had a good game last night. Your start of the week was uh, over 100 yards. Yeah, I have to bring him up first because I was getting <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> amounts of grief over Doriel Green Beckham because <laughs> right before the game, I said, hey, I'm rolling him out there. And so some people rolled him out there with me and, you know, I can take my lumps, right? Like Doriel Green Beckham didn't have a good game. This was a product of game flow for a large proportion of it because they just wanted to waste the clock out because they had a lead until the last three minutes of the game. The stats on wide receivers getting targets and catches were ridiculous. There were five total catches by Tennessee's wide receivers. Three of them were Doriel Green Beckham. Only two in the second half, both to Green Beckham. But Delaney Walker was the beneficiary of all the passing targets. McCluster had some before he got hurt. It just was. It, it didn't pan out. But somebody sent me a, a tweet, and they said, "Andy, you screwed me. I played Doriel Green Beckham ahead of Devonte Adams. <laughs> Whoops! Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, I did not tell you to do that. Doriel Green Beckham. I had him in my rankings as a wide receiver three flex play. That does not mean you go start him ahead of of, of Adams necessarily. So." Uh, it didn't pan out. It was a risk. I, I had to flex him over Aiken. I don't like Aiken's matchup. Had to flex him over Marvin Jones. That was probably a mistake. So, uh, it is what it is. The The passing offense needed to be down to, to start targeting outside wide receivers, I, apparently. Can I just say, I am I am personally happy you started Doyle Green Beckham. And Why is that? We'll leave it at that. Well, it's you want me to lose? Team. Absolutely. To lose. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on in the fantasy football world. News and notes from around the league. All right, let's go ahead and shoot through these as fast as we can. We got a lot to cover on today's show. Darren McFadden, we talked about the... Gro- oh, actually, we didn't. There no. was a news report that came out that he had a groin injury, but uh, everything that's being talked about now is that there's no real issue, that they were keeping him fresh. So still something to monitor, but I think McFadden is fine. We talked about this, though, a little bit. Is there anybody that you'd handcuff him with? I, I don't think there is because Rod Smith or Turbin or nope. somebody else. Nope. A lot of people asking, should I should I pick up Turbin? You know, the inevitable DMC injury, and I just don't think that there is a handcuff there. In useless news, we'll bring up, for Mike's sake, Christine Michael <laughs> was signed by the Redskins practice squad. So if you want to send Michael or if you want to send Mike a Redskins practice squad jersey of Christine Michael, uh, you can. And we'll make him wear it. And then Denver Broncos running back Ronnie Hillman will remain the starter in week 11 against the Bears. So you can roll him out there, I think, Bears. as a flex play. Yeah. All right. And then Alshon Jeffrey out of practice again on Thursday. 
What are you yeah. What are you hearing, uh, Jason? You know, I'm hearing not the best things for this week. You've got a guy who had limited participation on Wednesday and then was downgraded to out on Thursday. So there's either one of two things, right? That maybe they're resting him. But I don't think that you give him rest by just saying take it all off. If you're giving him a little rest, you have him be a limited participant. Um, he's dealing with a couple different injuries. The shoulder is the concern right now. But the matchup, the weather, the injury, you got a triple stack against Alshon Jeffrey this week. You saw that same exact thing happen last week, and I think he finished with about three fantasy points. So I'm not high on Alshon Jeffrey at all this week. Would you start Stevie Johnson ahead of Alshon I Jeffrey? I absolutely would start Stevie Johnson ahead of my own man crush, Alshon Jeffrey, who I love. But I think this week, yeah. That is that is pretty cool. Uh, not for, for Jeffrey owners, but no. for Stevie Johnson confidence. Uh, I, I'm confident in Stevie and that offense because yeah. they are – what did you just look up before? They're the highest yardage yeah, passing average. offense? Exactly right. They lead the league with 344 yards. No Keenan Allen? No Malcolm yeah. Floyd? Yeah. They got to go somewhere. All right. Let's go ahead and go through the injuries here. You tell me if you think uh, these one, guys – Okay. One other piece of news because it actually affects my start of the week. Uh, you know, the, it came out Darius Slay is going to be – uh, shadowing Cooper, Amari Cooper, who was my start of the week. I'm going to shift in the same game for the same reasons all across the board, but we've seen certain games where Cooper has the game and certain games where Crabtree has the game. I think it's going to be Crabtree this week. So Michael Crabtree is now my official so start of the week at the a, wide receiver You're making position. a switch. Yeah. I mean, okay. we do this all the time. New information. When, exactly. All right. Let's go ahead and see who's in and out. What's it going to be, McFly? <laughs> Are you in or out? Um, all right, quarterbacks. Are you in or out? Tony Romo. He's back. Yeah, he's in. He's my start of the week. All right, For Matt Forte. He's going to be out. He is a limited participant in practice, but I don't think they have any reason to rush him back with rookie Langford stealing the show. He's out. Marshawn Lynch. Oh, man. He this is not, two days in a row. Not practicing at all. This is the story. When you're a Lynch owner, you have to wait it out. You've got to play him if he is active. I actually have him ranked very highly. Expect him in. Expect him to have a monster game, but you have to own Rawls. Darren McFadden, we think, will be in. Yeah, he's not injured. Ryan Matthews. Out. He is ruled out. Concussion problems. No good in the brain. Is there any chance Darren Sproles has a better game because of this? There is an absolute chance Darren Sproles has a better game. He will have a better game, but I don't think a better game is necessarily a good game. All right. So I don't start him in almost most all formats. Carlos Hyde? Out. Not practicing. Not, not going to play. Alshon, do you think he plays? Uh, I do think he plays, and I do think I don't want to play him. Emmanuel Sanders? Uh, he's trending the right direction, was a limited participant after not play, at, after not practicing. He appears in and is a questionable play at best. John Brown and Michael Floyd out of Arizona. Uh, Brown is at least back to limited practice. Michael Floyd has been out, out. I would say Michael Floyd doesn't play. I would say John Brown suits it up and is about what he's been the last two weeks, which is worthless. So I would, I would avoid both of these guys. Uh, Vincent Jackson out again? Yep. He's uh, like his brother, Austin Safarian and Jenkins. They are limited participants in practice. His Buccaneer and never, brother, you mean? Yes. And will never, ever, ever play again. <laughs> That's what it's... Uh, ASJ has been practicing limited for weeks. Still not cleared. Not cleared. I don't get it. And then Malcolm Floyd is out. Eddie Royal. Eddie Royal has not practiced. Probably out. And Antonio Gates. Antonio Gates is going to play, but he is... Seriously banged up. We all love the MCL as a part of his game, but he has other injuries. So, um, and not a good matchup. So, I believe Gates was your sit of the week. Yeah, yeah. So, go. before we get into the rest of the fantasy forecast, our daily uh, dose segment, and some other things we got going on the show today, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's show, Sports Manias. The Sports Manias app is the fastest growing sports news app on the market. And let me tell you some of the things I love about. This app, we've talked about it before on the show. Our users, they've reached out and they've said how much they enjoy this app. It's a top eight sports app by USA Today Sports, and it's got rave reviews. But here's one of the things I love about it. You can set up customized feeds for each of your fantasy teams and for your favorite teams. So when you are just, you know, every day when you pick up your phone and you check your one or two, three favorite apps, 
you can just bounce between those feeds. It's super easy to set those up and they curate all the content in there and it lets you check every single day on your teams for updates and articles and videos and scores. And rumors. They've got a rumors tab that I love personally. Yeah, and that helps you find you know undervalued type of guys. It helps you make quick changes when guys go down. And the nice thing about these guys at Sports Manias is they're always updating the app changing all the time but yeah, they're always adding the yeah they're improving the app they're helping you know the notifications get better that type of thing so we really love the app check it out on uh the google play store on the app store it's the free sports manias app so go check that out let us know how you like it yeah our, our users have right and they love it yep. and yep. if you haven't got it become one grab it grab it all right let's get into oh we <laughs> we'd also like to thank our other sponsor uh of today's show the tops huddle app we have so many people that talk about the nostalgia of opening cards, you know, opening packs. I used to go at, literally every single weekend. Cause I'd go to neighborhood card sales. Like people would do it in their garage and they'd sell trading cards. Yeah. And we'd go oh. and we'd buy packs every single week. That is so great. Well, Brings now back good memories. you can bring those memories with your family on your phone. It is an app that you can download from Tops. It's the Huddle app. You get to open and collect officially licensed NFL digital cards. They are the real deal. The cards are beautiful. You can grow them, you can trade them, and you can play them. So you can actually play fantasy football with these cards. Over 300 million Topps digital packs have been opened since 2012. So what you need to do for the football fan, especially fantasy football fans, the app is a must-have. Download it for free on the App Store or Google Play, and you'll get 10 free packs today. That's the Topps Huddle app. Fantasy Forecast. All right, we got a lot of ground. Got a lot of ground to cover, Jason. You got it in you? Many yards. You're wearing uh, the baby blues of the team we're going to talk about first. Well, you know. The, the Detroit Li Lions. The, the Detroit Lions are America's team. They are? <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. They kind of are on Thanksgiving. Right. I mean, well, they're one of those games yeah. that are always there. All right, the Raiders go to Detroit to take on the Lions. Uh, the Raiders are favored by a point in this game. I really like Matt Stafford in this game. Uh, he's my start of the week. He's uh, Mike's start of the week as well because Mike cheated and, and used mine. And I like Derek Carr too. I think this game, Vegas has it at 48 and a half points. I think it's going to be up there. I think there's going to be a lot of scoring. Jason just talked about Crabtree. So here's, here's something interesting about the Lions. And we know this from watching Joyke Bell or Amir Abdullah or Zach Sinner or whoever is running into the pile for the Lions, they have they run the highest percentage of pass plays in the NFL. And that hasn't translated to great production, but in this game, I think it really will. Well, not only that, but you have a tool in Eric Ebron in the passing game that is going up against a defense that has not at all this year figured out how to guard the tight end. They've only had two decent games against the tight end, and both of those were actually because of the tight end, not because of their defense. Their defense, if you watched the game, gave up play after play to them. It just didn't get capitalized. But the the Lions use, they use Eric Ebron. He had eight targets last game. If he gets eight targets against Oakland, he's going to get a touchdown. He's going to have 60 yards and a good baseline for you. So I, it, he is Mike's start of the week. I love Ebron this week. I mean, we, we always say play the guy against Oakland. And Ebron is a talented first-round NFL draft pick. So... I like him a lot. What about the what about the Lions running game? Is there anything? Can they get anything going here with, you know? Probably not. Yeah, I know. Probably not. It's a trap question. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't start any of them with any slim semblance of, of joy or happiness. If I was in a 16-team league, I'd start Joyke Bell. Yeah, that's I mean, that's, seems... that's what it would be. And hey, on the other side of the ball, Latavius Murray, you and I both have him as our, our number 10 running back this week in RB1. Very confident that Murray will get you a, a kind of a, a high floor amount of points. And so this game, you know, both defenses struggle quite a bit. Run defenses, both have been pretty bad. Both pass defenses have been pretty bad. But the Raiders are 31st against the pass, which is why we like Stafford quite a bit. You're starting Carr. Yeah, starting Carr. He's You're sending been, him in. We're sending in the car. He's been uh, very reliable lately. He's been able to do it against uh, good defenses, bad defenses. So... I think he is a, a relatively safe play. I don't expect him to have one of his monster games. Uh, there's guys I like ahead of him, but but should have a good game in, a, in what could be a high-scoring affair here. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And you have uh, Golden Tate ranked 
very high compared to how he's performed this season. I don't mind that at all. I, I mentioned earlier in the week that I liked him, but it's reflected more in your rankings. You have him as the number 19 this week. There you go. A, a low-end wide receiver, too. His target numbers this year have really been very, very good. So what's happening with him? Well, why, why is he not performing? Because he hasn't had those boom games, and he hasn't had the, the yards after the catch that got him you know, where he was last year. He was very reliable last year. The the yards after the catch are a big deal, which we actually saw this last game. We saw him bust off really late, uh, a, a longer run. He's been getting a lot of really, really short targets. So his, his yards per catch this year have just been really tiny. I mean, he's been basically about t under 10, whereas you would normally assume a guy like Golden Tate would be getting in the 12 range of his yards per catch. And that's because of the yards after catch. He plays better at home, so I expect being home against Oakland, he can break off a couple runs. You know, he he's he's going to have five catches. If he breaks something off, he's definitely going to be in the wide receiver two range. All right, the New York Jets travel to Houston to take on the Texans. In this game, what are you expecting to see from the quarterbacks? Because we know that TJ Yates is starting this game, and so I think that makes the Jets, obviously, a very viable defensive play. Absolutely. I, I don't see anything – that the Houston Texans can do offensively to win this game. I realize they are tied for the division lead. Congratulations, all you Texans fans. And I think they have a legitimate chance of getting into the playoffs this year. But I don't give them a legitimate chance to win this game. And there, there's only a two-and-a-half point favorite to the Jets. But I just don't see TJ Yates, Yates getting the job done. Alfred Blue, Chris Polk, and your... Number one running oh, back of the on. week. Oh, come on. Come on. You love Grimes. No, I don't love you're Grimes. Getting, you're getting grimy. No, I'm not. No. I, I don't if, love Grimes at if all. If you're listening, please. That was that was a joke. Do not yeah, play don't, Grimes. Yeah, don't start Grimes over AP or whatever happens <laughs> when I mention a player. Yeah. Um, it, I think you just point out that you think Grimes is the better of the three backs. I just think Grimes has been more efficient. The stats tell me he's been the better of the three backs. And if Alfred Blue can't. This is the number one rushing D. Right. Okay, the Jets are the number one against the run, and nobody can run in Houston anyway, so stay away from any running backs. I, unlike what you said on the radio yesterday when you went on the game, I have no problem with Hopkins in this game whatsoever. He will be heavily targeted. He makes catches in traffic. He makes ridiculous catches. He gets ridiculous separation. I have no problem starting Hopkins whatsoever. They'll be down in this game, and they'll be slinging it around. He's the only pass catcher I want to start on Houston, but no problem with Hopkins. Well, now let's be clear. I don't have a problem starting Hopkins. You said yesterday that you would consider – we have a huge disparity in our rankings with Hopkins. You yeah. have him as a two. Exactly. And you said that you would sit him. No, no, no. If somebody had a really deep roster yes. and other guy. so right guys. Because right now, I said right I would, now you would play, I would play Mike play, Evans. I would play You'd Mike play Evans Eric over – Decker Dr exactly. right now. Right now, yeah, I would play Mike Evans and Eric Decker over DeAndre Hopkins. And that is insane. But here's why it's not insane. Clinically. <laughs> here's why it's not insane. It's not insane because I'm not saying to play Andre Johnson or someone that's not good. We're talking about Mike Evans and Eric Decker. Do you Decker want an Eric been Decker, fantastic. DeAndre Hopkins water bet? No. I've got him as my 15th wide receiver. And you have Decker at six. I will give you this. You give me that Hopkins finishes above Mike Evans and Eric Decker, then I'll take that water bet. The bet is I know he'll finish ahead of Decker. But not Mike Evans? Because you were saying I was clinically crazy to start Mike Evans over DeAndre Well, those Hopkins. you have close in the rankings. I, I, I'm i not going to put it past Evans to have a boom game with Hopkins facing a good defense. Yeah, so here here's the point. Foot Clan, you're listening. <laughs> here's the reality of DeAndre Hopkins. He's yeah, he's going amazing. To get, he's the he best. Is, he is amazing. He is going to get a ton of targets, but they're going to be coming from TJ Yates, which isn't necessarily that much worse than Hoyer anyways. How is it worse? He was way better with Yates last week. He did nothing before Yates came in. No, no, Yates no. fired it to him all the that, game long. I'm con I'm conceding that. But he's my number got... three this week, Foot Clan. Wait a minute. You've got DeAndre the... Hopkins is number three for me. Against Darrell Revis, you think he's going to be the third best wide receiver? Okay, here. Here's a bet for you. Top ten. You have him at 15. I, I will take that. All right. Absolutely. Water bet. I'm glad we found some common ground on the bet and none in real life. Yeah, and but I just want to be clear because I don't want people sitting DeAndre Hopkins in their league thinking that's what I'm preaching here because I am not. I, You would have to have, I mean, put it this way. if You'd have to have three top 12 wide receivers to sit DeAndre Hopkins who I've got at 15. That's that, fine. I got it, you. And if I you do, you. if you got that, then do All right, 
other side of the ball, Marshall and Decker. The big story with Marshall and Decker this year that people need to know, and they've known if you own them, is they are who catches the touchdowns for the New York Jets. The Jets are the highest percentage of their touchdowns, their passing touchdowns, go to wide receivers. They don't have a tight end that gets involved. They don't really have running backs that get involved. 88% of their passing touchdowns go to wide receivers. And so Marshall and Decker, they've been putting up those numbers. Decker scores. Marshall scores in almost every game. I don't know if there's been a game this year that one of them haven't scored. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there has been. Decker has only two games the whole year that he hasn't found the end zone. And one of those games, he didn't play. So that's fair that he didn't get in. So <laughs> he's got seven touchdowns on the year. He's just a great red zone option. He's one of these guys that week in, week out is a, is a great performer. He's right now uh, the 19th uh, wide receiver out there, and he's really consistent. He is not a guy that's going to boom and, and go off for 28. He just doesn't have that kind of target, that kind of talent. But he is a guy that's going to catch five, six balls for 60, 70 yards, and more often than not, he's getting in the end zone and getting a touchdown. Okay. I like both I, I want to move on, but I need to ask you this first. Chris Ivory, you know, the numbers say the Texans are the 25th best run defense, but the Texans in the last two weeks have only given up six points in each game, and they're at home. What's your confidence level with Ivory? He bounced back. He gave you a little bit of something last game, five yards of carry. Mangold was back. You're starting Ivory, but what do you have him rated as? Uh, Ivory, to me, I'm a little bit more worried about him. I have him as a high, high-level RB2. So he's, he's just outside the top 12. Just outside the top 12 for me because I do agree. Houston Texans' run D has been far improved from what we saw earlier in the year. We can't look at them like a bad defense anymore. All right, let's move on to the Colts. They go to Atlanta to face the Falcons. The Falcons have been struggling there's a little bit of a sense that they may be a mirage based on the fact that their first few wins were all fourth quarter comebacks and they haven't been able to perform on offense lately. They are favored by six in this game against the Colts with Matt Hasselbeck. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh -oh. this is my. Andy's almost upset of the week. Good old Matt Hasselbeck. If there's one thing the Colts do with Hasselbeck is they can play a conservative, disciplined offensive football. They're not going to limit Frank Gore anymore, and their weapons are still there. And I just, I just don't have a lot of confidence in the Falcons, uh, at a minimum, to cover this spread of six points. So if the Colts can do what they do, be efficient, Hasselbeck looked fine, I think they can win this game against the Falcons. And they have, they're in a division fight. Believe it or not, at four and five, yeah, against Houston and now Jacksonville, they are. I I actually like that pick. I think that the Houston the the Atlanta Falcons are a, a heavy mirage, so their their offense has been struggling too. I think the, the Atlanta. So, do you think that this game is one that becomes high scoring? Because a couple weeks ago we would have said, oh, Atlanta and the Colts, this is going to be a high scoring affair. No, I think this is actually going to be a, a lower scoring game. Yeah, Vegas has it at forty seven and a half, which is on the slightly higher end I would I would bet the under yep. on on that personally yep. um what about Frank Gore I think Frank Gore is solid but we'll see uh a little bit more attention this week they know they're gonna have to you know when I say they I mean Atlanta is gonna have to focus on Gore and put the ball into Hasselbeck's hands and make him make plays on the outside and so Gore I think has a an okay game he has a Jonathan Stewart type of game he's yeah. going to get the quantity Maybe not the efficiency you want, but I'm fine with Gore. Gore's a starter this week. I'm not. I don't remember where I have him in my rankings. I have him at 12. You have him at 13. Yeah, so we so both think the same thing. Low, low RB one, high RB two. He's going up against the Falcons, who, w when it comes to their run D, I don't know what to make of them. Earlier in the year, they were atrocious. They don't give up that many yards. Uh, they had a stretch of four games where they let eight running back touchdowns in four games on the ground. They were just porous, but now they've got three in a row without any touchdowns scored on the ground. So you got you got Frank Gore coming in. He's going to get the ball a lot, which is why I really like him as as a play. You're not going to get a goose egg from Frank Gore unless he gets injured. So I, I like playing him, and I think he gets in. I think he gets a touchdown this now, week. Now, I do start Matt Ryan this week, and I'm starting him in a couple leagues as a streamer. I picked him up off waiver wire. The, the Colts defense is 22nd against the run, 28th against the pass. Uh, you know, we're taking the under, but I think, I think Ryan can be efficient enough. This offense, what I'm really curious to see is if Hankerson returns, I know Hankerson's not, you know, he's not a, an amazing player, 
but he does help the offense because Roddy White has not been dependable or useful, really, is the word. Yeah. And Julio needs somebody to help him out on the offensive side of the ball. So having Hankerson get open, we like Tammy a little bit as a streamer this week. I think Matt Ryan can get it done. I'm talking 250 and two. Uh, I would I would say 250 and two is exactly what he's going to have, and that's yeah. probably that's okay if you're a streamer. If you're looking to stream guys, you you want over 200 and you want two touchdowns. So I, I'm fine with that, but I don't expect him to be able to have one of those big games. I don't I don't see the possibility of a 303 for him. So right. before we talk Buccaneers and Eagles, let me ask you one more question about this game. How much does the Hasselbeck effect, or how much does Hasselbeck being in there affect Hilton? I like calling it the Hasselback effect. Yeah. That, that sounds nice. Um, you know, Hilton actually got plenty of targets when Hasselback was in, and uh, Hilton was a little bit uh, limp or lame, as you want to correct me in saying, uh, when he was playing with Hasselback before. So I actually don't think it's going to have that big an effect on T.Y. Hilton. Uh, I have confidence in Hilton. Uh, okay. Okay, let me, let me see where we have Hilton out of curiosity this week in our rankings on the fantasyfootballers.com we have hilton as a wide receiver too yeah so all right let's talk about the buccaneers at the eagles this one was believe it or not really close to being my almost upset of the pick the, of the week the buccaneers at the eagles yeah is that because of sanchez that is because the eagles i'm their, their offense is not going to be special hmm. ryan matthews is out mark sanchez is in and you know the reason it's not that pick is because they're going to win this game and they're going to win it with their defense because they're right. going to stop Jameis Winston and that offense. Now, that being said, Mike Evans, 53 targets over the last three weeks. A must start. An absolute must start. You want to know what he's going to do? I wish Doriel Green Beckham got 53 targets. <laughs> you know, in your defense, Green Beckham looked good going up for going up for passes, making room, catching hard passes. So, you know, oh, you know who we didn't talk about real quick going back to that that game last night? Allen Robinson is good. I yeah, mean, we've been good. saying that for a long time, but he made some catches that were like, how did he hold yeah. on to the ball? So, And I almost had a like, you know, he is what I thought he is speech for Hearns, but I'm going to give him a break because guys have bad games every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, getting back to the Eagles and Buccaneers, I, you know, I think that the Eagles are going to be able to get it done at home as far as offensively fantasy wise. Uh, I would expect with Ryan Matthews out, DeMarco Murray is going to just – Eat volume wise, he to me is a an extremely safe play with Matthews out. Murray should get red zone opportunities and plenty of yards. Sproles gets a slight bump up. If you're in a full point PPR and you are desperate, maybe play him. But for the most part, I I, I see some people overreacting on Sproles. I do think it helps him, but he's been so low. He's, he's been he's irrelevant. A, yeah, he's a sleeper guy. No one, no team in the NFL has more running back receptions, like percentage of their receptions go to the running back than the Eagles do. 34% of their receptions go to running backs. And so that naturally benefits Sproles because Sproles is going to spell Murray. And so if Sanchez is dumping the ball off, I think both of those guys in PPR leagues, half-point PPR leagues, are, are okay plays. So I look, I look at this game, and I think that most every player out there, the Foot Clan listeners, they know what to do with Mike Evans. You start him. They know what to do with DeMarco Murray. You start him. Their question is going to come on two different guys, one of which is a little bit easier. But the real question is Jordan Matthews. What do they do with Jordan Matthews? Do you start Jordan yeah. Matthews? Uh, you can flex Jordan Matthews, and if you have the luxury, you can hold him and just see what this is with Sanchez. He is not worth starting, actually. And, you know, now that I think about it, I just don't want to. I don't really want to. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did. He was a favorite target of Sanchez uh, when last Sanchez year. was in yeah. last year. So that's I, fine. I think he I think you <clears throat> you're right in the beginning, I think, is he's a flex play. But if you've got the luxury to sit him, that would be nice to see. I mean, what we can't forget the Buccaneers are a top at, you know, the top half defense. They're number 10 against the pass, number 12 against the run. They're not pushovers. I do think this game is is more defensive than offensive, but the Eagles are going to score a couple times at home. I, I expect them to have, you know, two or maybe three touchdowns. So, Doug Martin, that's the other question. I Yeah, you start Doug Martin. Okay. You start Doug Martin, but you're not excited about Doug Martin. You know, the one thing that's interesting about the Buccaneers is they have a high, the highest percentage of their touchdowns uh, in the league go to 
that go to running backs. Okay. They have 30% of their passing touchdowns go to running backs, which is the highest in the league. So Martin Sims, we'll see if one of them can get one of those chiefs go to San Diego to take on the chargers. Chargers are underdogs in this matchup at home. Yeah, well, and the I, don't, have, I don't blame them. Yeah, I was going to say the Chiefs have been playing some lights-out defense, so I, I, I don't blame them either. The question is going to be, can the Chiefs get enough offense to catch up to, you know, Phillip Rivers leading the league in, in yards? What do you do from a running game here? Do you have any confidence at all in being able to start Melvin Gordon? None. Zero. Zero in this game. I could not agree more with you. I wouldn't even flex him in this game. No. He's a guy that hasn't been getting in the end zone, and he's just relied on getting yards between twenty from the 20 to the 20. And the Kansas City Chiefs don't look like a defense right now that's going to be giving those up. Completely agree. Woodhead probably has a higher floor just because he'll be involved in those dump-off pass games. The pass rush for Kansas City has been incredible. Yeah, and wow. and so who benefits from that? The dump offs to Woodhead. So I think Woodhead is perfectly fine to start this week. I have confidence in him. And uh, who is the backup quarterback for San Diego? Should we throw him out there? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Just, but yeah, I understand. Going to be getting sacked. I certainly understand the point there because my goodness, uh, I think six sacks last week for the for the Chiefs. Yeah, we they, both we both have you have Woodhead just inside your RB one range. I'm a little bit lower, but I think he's very startable. Rivers is a is a trap play to me here. Um, a lot of people they've been riding Rivers and they have been succeeding with Rivers. I mean, he's been fantastic from a fantasy perspective this year. And the great thing about him is even when he's playing bad or he's in a game that he's losing, there's garbage time. There's garbage time points, and he is you know we the champion of garbage time this year. But this is a this is a matchup where I don't think it's going to be I don't think the the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be up forty to fifteen where Philip Rivers is going to have garbage time where he's going to be going down trying to score three scores in two minutes. Yeah. In which case it scares me from a fantasy perspective. Rivers is a guy where if you've got the luxury to start someone else, I have him surprisingly low ranked. And the other reason I think it's a trap is because when people just look at the stats of like if they're playing in ESPN or Yahoo and they look. Kansas City looks like a beatable defense total on the year because they started so atrociously, but, but that's not who they are anymore. No, we looked this up yesterday, and we compared the Rams defense, which a lot of people think upper echelon, and the Chiefs defense over the last five weeks, and the Chiefs defense has uh, by almost 25% outscored them in, you know, in terms of defensive fantasy points. So the Chiefs defense is on fire. Uh, I still think Rivers will have an okay fantasy day simply because they can't run the ball into the end zone. They have the highest percentage of their touchdowns that come via the pass. 91% of all of their touchdowns on the year come via the pass. And so Rivers benefits from that. But the other side of the ball is what I want to talk about. Char West is as high as he could be this week. The, 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 the rushing defense for the Chargers is the worst in the league against the fantasy points. Yeah, Charizard. In terms of fantasy points given up. Charizard could finish the week as the number one running back. Nobody would be surprised. His floor is very high. His ceiling is extremely high. He's your start of the week, right? Char West was your start of the week. I yes, believe that is true. he was. He was. So, yeah, you, you definitely, uh, definitely start Charizard with confidence. Uh, what do you do with Jeremy Macklin? A lot of people. Yeah, sad. I think you can start him in this game. He's he's struggled. He's struggled. They haven't need like I said last game they were dominating Denver. They had four interceptions, short fields, didn't need to throw the ball. I think I actually think Alex Smith is a sneaky play in this game in terms of a streaming option if you had to play somebody. And I think Macklin's fine. I think Kelsey's fine. Uh but I don't like Gates. He's my sit of the week. I don't like the other side of the ball. The Chiefs' defense is too good. So we got we got to move on. We got to go to the next matchup here. The Packers are taking on the Vikings, a huge division game. Oh, man. Huge. Five-star game. Yeah, and so uh, I'm of the impression, and I don't want to disparage the Viking fans out there, you earned your record, right? Mm -hmm. You did what you needed to do. Yep. But I don't think you're as good <laughs> as you think you are. Okay? I really don't. Now, that being said... The Packers don't seem to be as good as we thought they were either. So this game should be very interesting from both a real NFL standpoint and a fantasy standpoint. 
Who are you very confident in starting in this game? Adrian Let's Peterson. Let's start there. Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson. I now, am, is he a uh, wide receiver, running back? What is he? Is He, he uh, is a Hall of Fame running back <laughs> going against a defense that has really been struggling on the ground the last few weeks. Yeah, they have fallen off a map because they – off the map. They yeah. have – Started the year. They started the year great. Yeah, their defense looked great to start the year. They had a couple injuries to their secondary, which kicked off kind of a domino effect of shifting around pieces and just falling apart. A complete collapse. So now this this game is in Minnesota. The Packers are, are struggling and reeling. Now, they're a team that normally bounces back, though, right? I mean, remember the famous R-E-L-A-X? Yes. You know, it's which like, we almost got another version of this week from McCarthy. Yeah, so... You know, they, they bounce back, and, and here, if you were to pick the winner of this game, are you saying it's going to be the Packers? I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think the Packers win this game. I think it'll be close because the defense for the Vikings has been pretty good, and you have to temper that bounce-back expectation for Rodgers. We expected it last week at home against the Lions. It didn't happen. I don't think you're going to go on the road to Minnesota in that, in that environment in the division game and put up 35 points. And, there's, and Vegas agrees. It's 44 point over-under. I think this game is a probably a – Two touchdown game for yep. Rodgers. I, I agree. So I agree. where do they go? Where do the touchdowns go? Well, I don't think that they go on the ground. I don't think you're going to have Starks and Lacey uh, having a very good game. If you've got to start one, I would start Starks. Yep. He is the starter. Yep. But And I would flex Starks just for the record, just for it, where I have him ranked. Exactly. He's not an RB1 or probably even an RB2 this week. Uh, you know, Devontae Adams gets so many targets. I believe he's the safest play of their wide receivers right now. But his upside is limited by his talent. Devontae, get it get it together. You stink. Wow. Sorry. That was painful. That was a little rude of me. Remember what happened the last time someone said somebody that's stunk actually on why the show? I, that's why I said okay, it. Okay, so go ahead and say it so I can cut the sound bite out. Devontae Adams, you stink. All right, thank you. Because right, the last thank time you. we made that, Mike famously now, yeah. made that off-season prediction about, a, it was another Devontae. Yeah, Devontae Maybe. Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember. Oh, I, that was great. I remember. So so, um, I, I, so you I would actually, play Adams over Cobb. <sighs> you said that statement, and now you have Cobb on your own roster, and you're going to play Devontae Adams over Cobb. No. So I, what's wrong with Cobb? Because uh, What is wrong with him? Well, what I said was Adams, I think, is the safer play. Okay. I think his his floor is higher than Cobb. I would play Cobb if I only had both. If I had Cobb and Adams on my roster and could only start one, I would start Cobb because his ceiling is higher because he doesn't stink. He is very good. So, um, But he's not been getting the targets that Adams has. James Jones, forget about him right now. Uh, I think he's, his age they is have. caught up to him. They have. Uh, <laughs> Stefan Diggs, do you start him? Yes or no? Yes. You do start Stefan Diggs. I do. Uh, and a lot of the questions that I've been getting on, on jointhefoot.com and on the website, Diggs seems to be the guy I'm sitting in a lot of the comparative situations. We actually have him. You have him very low this week. Just You have him outside the wide receiver three range. I have him at the back end of the two range. So flex, wide receiver two, somewhere in that category if you don't have a better option. Yeah, I, I think I need to move him up a little bit in my rankings. Yeah. I, I see where he is, and he's too low for where I actually think this game flow works. But I would agree, he's definitely, I say start him, but obviously that depends on who, who you have as other options. All right, the 49ers go up to Seattle and have to uh, endure what the Seattle Seahawks are going to do to them. They're going to punch him in the helmet. A 12.5 point favorite at home, and Russell Wilson's your start of the week. Um, because it just seems like his floor is so high. It's basically the equation there. You're not starting Gabbert. You're not starting Hyde, who will probably be out. You're not starting Shane, uh, Sean Drone. You're not starting a wide receiver. And if you had to start anybody on this entire San Francisco roster, I guess it's Garrick Selleck. Wow. And that means stay away. Wow. I, I, don't, I don't remember the last time I've looked at a roster and literally thought there isn't one single player or position – I wouldn't play a kicker, a wide receiver, a defense. I would not play one. I wouldn't play Selleck. I wouldn't play a single 49er. Not All right, one. So, so we do start Wilson and the Lynch-Rawls situation. If Lynch sits, Rawls is a great start. You start either one of these guys. I love the matchup here. The 49ers, I believe, are going to you know, get treated poorly by San Francisco <laughs> this week. Uh, remember, the 49ers played the Seahawks very well a couple weeks ago. And in San Francisco. In San Francisco. And then Seattle lost this last week. So you've got one of two things, right? Either either Seattle's not as good 
as as you know they they and they're think not, they they're are not, right? they're not as good and the 49ers are better than they're getting credit for so maybe you have this be close or the other option which i'm going to lean more towards is that seattle really needs to send a message here after losing at home against the cardinals and that they're going to kind of try to boat race a little bit harder and i've got a, a score prediction for you i think it'll be 24 to 6 i think that's going to be the score of the game i like it okay I, li- I like so, that. Yeah. I, I would I would think that Seattle will actually put up more than twenty four, but but if the if the forty nine ers only get six, which I don't see how they get more. Um, yeah, we'll see. That's, we'll see. That's so right. Bengals at Cardinals Sunday night football game, big game. We thought maybe the Bengals would come in undefeated, but they lost to Houston on Monday night. Now they have to go on the road and take on a Cardinals team that just had a big win over Seattle last week. Carson Palmer, I'm completely confident. He's my number three quarterback this week. That's not homerism. That is Carson performing against good teams because they throw the ball. They they're the the second highest scoring offense in football, and so I'm I'm not going to doubt Palmer in this matchup after he did what he did to uh, Sherman and the the Seahawks last week. Yeah, Palmer has shown that he can play against the best. I do not doubt Palmer. I do doubt his fantasy production without Michael Floyd and John Brown. Last week you saw Michael Floyd was used like the man that he is, and he was great, and he was great for Carson Palmer. Two of the touchdowns went to Michael Floyd. If Michael Floyd is out and and John Brown is limited, I, I just can't get behind. I mean, I've got Carson as my number eight quarterback this week, so I'm not completely off of him. Did you move him up? No. I thought he was 12. Okay, so he's eight now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think if for some reason both Brown and Floyd sit, Ellington will be more involved in the passing game. Makes sense. He'll but I don't be- know if that's a fantasy relevant statement, to be honest with you. If for some people that need, you know, they're, they're, Ellington is on waivers. Deeper league. Yeah. And, you know, if Ellington is on waivers, I see people playing guys that, you know, you. I would rather play Ellington over a lot of the other waiver fodder. So let me ask you this, though. Let, staying at the running back position, people need to know this with CJ2K, with Chris Johnson. Tougher matchup, mm-hmm. right? Yep. The, uh, the Bengals... Run defense is 13th in the league. Their pass defense 13th. They're a very well balanced defense. They're not elite, but they're not, uh, you know, they're they're above average. So Chris Johnson this week, we both have pretty low. I have him at 18, so that's RB two. So I'm starting him over guys like Hillman. I'm starting him over Gordon. I'm starting him over uh, Matt Jones and I Eddie have, Lacy and all those guys. I have to believe I have him lower than you do. You do. You do. You have him as a at twenty seven, so outside of the RB two range. And I think that that's fair. Chris Johnson. He slowed down a little bit. Yep, he is slowing down against decent defenses and and bad defenses. Um, and now the Bengals come in, and the Bengals they fell apart last week, but their defense looked great. I just don't see it. And I think that as he slows down, you just get one or two more carries. Not you know you're not giving the roll over, but. A few more carries might go to Andre Ellington, which will hurt his value. I, I don't like Chris Johnson. I like John game. Stewart more than Chris Johnson. I oh, like yeah. Langford more, Blunt more, Gore more, uh, McCoy more. So uh, he's he's still startable, but we're just saying temper your expectations in this game. Yeah. Speaking of tempered expectations, if you're a Jeremy Hill owner, uh, you don't have any anymore. Yeah, you so, don't have any expectations. No, and, and you're not going to – see that improve on the road against Arizona's uh, fourth ranked run defense, seventh ranked pass defense. Who do you have confidence in on the offensive side of the ball? We, we had our sits of the week segment on Wednesday, by the way, people really enjoyed the quizzing that we did on that. The, uh, the questions and the sits of the week on Wednesday. So we're going to keep those going. Dalton was my sit of the week. Green, AJ green was my sit of the week at the wide receiver position. So is it geo? Uh, Gio is, is okay. I mean, Mike, I believe has him as a start of the week. We've seen running backs beat Arizona through the air. The guy that I have the most confidence in, and, and don't, no, don't mistake this. If I had AJ green and, and Marvin Jones, I would absolutely play AJ green, but for where people have these guys on their roster and the roles that they have, Marvin Jones, I think has a good game for Marvin Jones this week. Because Patrick Peterson is across the field on A.J. Green, and so targets are going to go elsewhere. Our defense has been very good against the tight end. So did you say our? I did. You said our well, defense. Well, we are in Arizona. The, I know. You know, um, it, they've been very good against the tight end. So I think Marvin Jones is going to be a more targeted, more utilized role. We, we saw Doug Baldwin tear apart the Cardinals, uh, you yeah. know, not 
Patrick Peterson. And I'm I'm still okay starting Eifert in this game, by the way. Interesting stat nugget for the Bengals. 50% of their passing touchdowns are to the tight end position this season. Okay? So Eifert's just been absorbing them like a magnet. He had a a bad game last week, but he'll be targeted. And if he had caught the ball last week, he would have had an okay game. I I do not hesitate at all about starting Eifert. All right, last game to cover here. Monday Night Football, Bills go to New England. They take on the Patriots. This is a uh, weather in this game is, is going to be cold, not too cold. Should be all right. Patriots just lost Edelman after a week after losing Lewis. We talked about, we've talked about Amendola a lot this week, I, I, I think pretty exhaustively. One question I had to you was, how does it impact Gronkowski for the owner of you know of Gronkowski and the owner of Brady, what what are the implications here for how you see the offense playing out in fantasy and in, in regular? So for other guys, here's what I would expect you see: you see a slight bump up in the guys that get targets. So in LaFell, in Gronk, in those in those type of guys, I think you get a bump up in targets. They get one or two more targets a game, but you get a slight bump down for the overall offense staying on the field and moving because they've, they've lost two important pieces that help pick up those third downs in critical situations. The one guy that I do think it benefits, so I, I would say it's pretty much a neutral wash for everybody, but Gronk becomes a little bit more important on third down and in the red zone. So while the offense takes a hit, I think Gronk is at worst neutral and could take a bump up here fantasy-wise because while he might lose some yards, I, I wouldn't doubt if his you know total yards per game go down. I think his touchdowns are gonna if they if it's even possible to go up. Yeah, he's I, be used more. the only thing I disagree. I don't think his yards are going down. I don't think anything's going down about Gronkowski. I think uh, even with the offensive efficiency, I just think the target numbers are going to be so high for him. But yeah, that's a pretty good take. I, I agree with a lot of that. I think their offense as a whole probably struggles a little bit, but it's it's the Patriots. Right. You know, it's the Patriots. They figure it out. And uh, other side of the ball, I think the biggest question fantasy owners have this week is how confident can I really be in starting LaShawn McCoy against the second best run defense in New England? McCoy's been on a roll. He has, hundred, I think, 120-something yards in two consecutive games. He's been playing great. So, uh, and he'll, you know, they lean on him, but how much can you really expect from him? Uh, you know, you, you've got him as a, a bottom half RB1. I've got him kind of as a middle of the pack RB two. That's low. That's low. That's very low wise. for a guy that is you know essentially a top five six option on a, on a normal weekly basis. One of the things that you might see happen here for the Patriots as they redefine themselves both weekly and after the injury is they might come out and say we need to run the ball better and play more defense and and we need to lock those things down. And if that happens, that scares me for Lashawn McCoy's upside the nice thing though is he gets the ball a ton you're not going to have LaShawn McCoy go out and just destroy your team you just might not have that really big upside play but you're definitely starting him okay and then uh Tyrod Taylor is he streamable this week I I read an interesting stat he leads the NFL in fantasy points per throw yeah well he's been very efficient you don't see a lot of 300 yard games from Tyrod Taylor through the air but yet you do see multiple three touchdown games so you know that's that's what you're looking for from an NFL quarterback from a fantasy quarterback it's great to lead in fantasy per throw but you want a lot of throws then and he's not getting them so in this game you saw him beat the the Patriots well not beat the Patriots but you saw him have a great fantasy game against the Patriots earlier this year the one thing I warn about that is he got off to the worst start ever against the Patriots and then, really, it wasn't garbage time because they were coming back in the game, but it was late in the game with a different type of scheme that he was able to succeed on. So I think he has both a good game and a bad game. I've got him scheduled for three interceptions, but uh, a decent amount of yards on the ground. Um, I'm curious where I have him ranked. Let me check that. I have Tyra Taylor as my 19, and you have him as a 13. So uh, I think there's better streaming options out there. He's a guy that... Wouldn't surprise me if he has a great game, but I'm not going to try to predict that this week. All right. Well, that does it for our fantasy forecast. We had to cover quite a few games today. Hopefully, we gave you some uh, valuable insight you can use for starting guys. We're going to take a minute and talk to Chris Meany of the Fantasy Sports Network, give you some DFS insight guys he likes this week. The Daily Dose. 
All right, the fantasy footballers are excited as usual to welcome in Chris Meany of the Fantasy Sports Network, dropping some DFS knowledge on our listeners. How you doing, Chris? Not too bad, guys. Uh, ready to rock after a rough week ten. <laughs> yes, that was a uh, a crazy week. I mean, uh, Mike isn't here to kind of uh, ask his questions, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start real fast with the one that's on the top of Mike's mind. And it's, uh, okay. it, is Kristen Michael a good pickup this week in DFS? <laughs> yeah, no, this guy's released now. He's done. <laughs> I know, but I don't want to let Mike live it down, and so I want to bring it up on as many contexts uh, as I can. Every show, every interview, that's, it's just, it's our new thing we do. Yes, yeah. Mike, it, it, it's, it's. It's funny, guys. Uh, Michael, just a really hot topic, right? When this guy was picked up by the Cowboys, everybody wanted him. Um, but again, he just is a big disappointment. He's the best uh, future running back prospect discussion piece. That That's all he's ever yeah. been. And I don't know how many fantasy points you get for that, but he's been very good at that before. <laughs> so, but we'll get. Yeah, for sure. He's out of my, he's out of my lineups. Yeah, okay. So, hot tip. No Christy Michael this week, but let's actually focus on the uh, the week eleven DFS plays here. Who are the big budget guys you have confidence in spending the money on this week? Uh, I think at the quarterback position, it's Cam Newton for me. And you know what? I haven't given this guy enough credit because you know at the start of the year, I obviously didn't like his weapons with Calvin Benjamin going down again. I just you know I wasn't really a big fan of of Ginn and. and Funches, and even though Funches is kind of starting to come around, it's just Cam's been so consistent. I mean, last week, 20 fantasy points. The week before that, 34, 19, 16, 21, 16, 29, 28. It seems like his floor is right around the 16 to 19 mark, and that's perfectly fine for a quarterback. So I'm willing to pay up for him at $8,600 against Washington. Uh, I'm not willing to pay up for Tom Brady. I'm not going to go that way against Aaron Rodgers. He let me down too many times, so I'm off Aaron Rodgers, although it could be a sneaky play because, you know, uh, sometimes I find in DFS, you know, when they have bad weeks, people don't want them anymore. Nobody wants Andy Dalton this week. I know it's a tough matchup, but nobody wants him because he couldn't do anything against Houston. And I'm actually fine with rolling out Andy Dalton, maybe not in a cash game, but in a, in a tournament play at $7,900. I know it's a little tough against Arizona, and he was really disappointing last week, but he still has a lot of weapons around there. So I'm willing to pay up for Andy Dalton. My favorite quarterback, again, uh, and guys, I feel like I just always say this to you guys, but Derek Carr. I mean, I love Derek Carr against Detroit he's a nice price at $7,700 he's tied for first and with seven deep touchdown passes that passes over 20 plus yards he's got great weapons in Cooper and Crabtree uh, Crabtree has 16 looks over 20 plus yards Cooper only four Crabtree getting targeted more in the red zone than Cooper uh, but I love Crabtree again this week and going up against Detroit like I mentioned just the third most fantasy points against the quarterback so I'm willing to go that way for Derek Carr and it's just as we saw last week, if you can find a guy under $8,000 who can get you at least 20 points, then you're kind of laughing from that quarterback position. I mean, last week it was Cousins. I don't suggest Cousins again this week. I think we just know to pick on that same secondary. But Derek Carr last week, 19 points in what was kind of a down game from him. And the week before that, 27 FanDuel points, 29, 22. He has over 1,200 yards and 13 TDs over his last four games. Yeah. So from the quarterback position, I love Derek Carr. Yeah, I, what do you think about a car Crabtree stack? Because we were talking in the studio a little bit with Darius Slay lined up on Cooper and shadowing him. Crabtree, we we really like him as well. So, would you? What's your thoughts on the stack? Because I know we've gone back and forth on some of the winners have had those stacks. What do you think about those guys this week as a stack? Yeah, I love Crabtree. I mean, I, Crabtree and Carr are going to be in a lot of my lineups this week for sure. Uh, a little bit of a down week, of course. Only 7.5 Fandle points last week. He still had 55 yards, four catches. But before that, I mean, the guy was just, you know, raking in a lot of targets. Had back-to-back 100-yard -back games. He's got four touchdowns in his last four games. So I do like the stack a lot. I'm willing to to roll with Crabtree for sure. Uh, from the other wide receiver position, there's a lot of guys I like that are just kind of undervalued. Obviously, Amendola has a bigger role with New England Patriots this week only $6,100. That one game against Buffalo earlier in the year, Edelman had 19 targets. So I wonder where all those targets are going to go. Sure, Gronk is going to get some. Uh, LaFell's obviously going to get some. But I like Amadola in a spot where last week we saw him get 10 catches. you got to remember, 0.5 per catch. So I like Amadola in that spot too, and he's fairly cheap. Um, you know what? You want to take a long shot? Here's a long shot. Kenny Britt 
I mean, it, it's, it's not a, a cash play, uh, but a $5,300 against Baltimore's secondary. I know it's Case Keenum. He's not great, but he can't be worse than Nick Foles. <laughs> Watching a lot of games here in the office and not glued to Rams games, although I do love Gurley, but I just noticed that every single game, St. Louis takes about two or three shots downfield to Kenny Britt, and Foles has just not been able to connect. So uh, Case Keenum, also known to throw some interceptions here and there, but I think that there's certainly a shot for some upside in, in a big tournament play where Kenny Britt could be a, a sneaky, sneaky play. Yeah, I like that. And and Jason made the point on the show earlier uh, yesterday, just the fact that, okay, Foles is gone. This has to just be an upgrade. You just kind of have to be because you eight straight games of under 200 yards and just not no efficiency from Foles at, whatsoever. At the worst, it cannot be a downgrade. You can't <laughs> sit there and go, oh, no, you know, things are going to get worse. Um, you know the guy yeah. that – that I like a middle middle of the tier guy that that I see just a value. What do you think of Sharkandrick West and his his uh, Fanduel price right now? Is is that right? Is it forty five hundred? West West is seventy one. Oh, okay. And Char- I'm I'm with you. Sharkandrick West has been. I mean, he passed the test last week when he went up against Denver. Nobody wanted this guy. And the Sunday Million on Fanduel, I believe his ownership was one point six percent owned, and he went off for uh, twenty nine Fanduel points against Denver. He's got forty nine over his last two games and sixty nine over his last three. And if we didn't like that matchup against Denver, we have to love it against San Diego this week. So I'm with you. Uh, yes, I love Jark Hendrick West at seventy one hundred dollars. Sticking with running backs. I'm willing to pay up for Freeman this week against the Colts. Uh, I like that a lot. McFadden, too, 105 touches over the last four games for Darren McFadden. You have to think that Romo back now has to help out McFadden a little bit. You don't have to run the ball all the time. He's only $6,800 and has also a nice matchup against Miami. Also willing to pay up for Adrian Peterson. He seems to be the only running back. Uh, you take a look at, I don't know what your guys' rankings were, but take a look at the top 15 running backs. A lot of them hurt or bust. Besides Adrian Peterson, he seems to be consistently getting it done. The knock on him is not finding the end zone. But against Green Bay this week, $8,900 also willing to pay up for him. Yeah, yeah. Peterson is one of those guys, when you look at the total carry numbers too this year, there's a giant gap between the second, third, fourth guys and Peterson. He's up almost 30 carries or more ahead of everybody else. So you know the workload's there. And then obviously he's Adrian Peterson. He can break the long touch at any time. So that, that makes it worth it. Um, is there any other any other bargains we should know about? Um, you know, when I was looking at Aiken, Aiken's still worth it. I mean, it's a tough matchup against St. Louis, $5,900. This guy did get 14 targets last week, only reeled in half of them. Uh, Givens is another sneaky little play, a little revenge game against the Rams, $4,500, found the end zone. Between him and Aiken, they had 21 targets. There's really just not a lot of, of receiving options there in Baltimore. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot. Maybe if you do want to go Dalton, you want to be contrarian. Like I said, it is a little bit of a tough matchup. Uh, you have to think uh, Patrick Peterson is going to shadow AJ Green. So maybe Marvin Jones, Marvin Jones at $5,400 against Arizona. Again, it's a tough matchup yeah. and it could be a sneaky play uh, because of, you know, he had a down week last time. So sometimes I like to try to find these guys where people are going to be off of them because they're coming off bad weeks. I like yeah. Ebron dropping a lot of balls lately, but I like the matchup against Oakland. They can't cover tight ends. And finally, Jason Witten, now that Romo's back, Witten can be a factor. I noticed last week, Ertz and Selleck for Philadelphia, two tight ends. They had 14 targets, 11 catches, and 202 yards against Miami. So Witten, if Romo has any rest at all, he can always go to his BFF and just throw it to Witten for eight or nine yards every single time. Really like the Witten play. He was almost my start of the week uh, this week as well. And I'm glad you brought up Cam Newton because the thing that people don't understand, it's kind of shocking. You know, the top three scoring offenses in football, it's New England, it's Arizona, and then it's Carolina. Wow. It's Carolina yeah. with, despite the weapons or what perceive what we perceive as inefficient or I mean uh ineffective weapons, it's not the case. They're they're extremely efficient. He gets in the end zone. So I'm I'm glad you brought Newton up. We really appreciate you coming on the show yet again today and dropping some great knowledge for our listeners. Well, I'll have you back next week. Hey. Hey, man, uh, my pleasure, guys. Uh, I love your show, and uh, anytime you guys want to have me on, more than willing. Absolutely, and you can follow him, uh, follow Chris on Twitter, at Chris Meany, that's M-E-A-N-E-Y, and uh, he'll answer your questions on there as well. So thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks, guys. Uh, enjoy the football this week, and catch you next week. Will do. Take care. Sweet. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Right on, guys. All yeah, right, no have problem, a good one. Uh, you too, guys. Take yeah. care. All right, thanks again to Chris Meany for joining us on the show today. As usual, dropping some great information 
to you guys, to the Foot Clan. I do want to take a couple minutes and hit the mailbag, answer some listener questions. Uh, are your pipes ready? Oh, this is my final chance. I didn't even think about it. I know, it. I know. I'm springing it on you. Here we go. Mailbag. Mailbag! Was that all right? It Did was I- okay, but I was hoping for the yeah! Yeah! All right. That was at least a five out of ten. All right. Mike will be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Come back. Mike, yeah, all I right. miss you. Mailbag, we're going to answer some questions from the listeners. You can go to the website, click on the submit a question button, and uh, it's easy as pie. We we pick a few out. We try to answer them on the show. All right. Callum in Northampton, UK. Bonjour. <laughs> I'm struggling to work out who to start, Andre Ellington or John, John Starks. John Starks. I would definitely go Andre over John Starks. But if that, it's- That's like John Stark, right? Like- <laughs> right. Um, yeah. No spoiler alert. No, I would go but- uh, James Starks. Yeah, I would go James Starks no as well. Which wide receiver should I start for week 11? Kamar Aiken, Terrence Williams, or Jamison Crowder? That's a, a, a good question. Yeah, I, I, I do like that question i'm more I'm, conservative i'm more of a wait and see with terrence williams and romo so I, I, i'm gonna take aiken and the targets you're gonna take aiken and the targets i'm tempted to go jamison crowder here if there was the problem is the carolina defense i'm gonna stick with you on my sit of the week of kamar aiken all right travis in new york city new york city stevie johnson or four set in the flex this week Ooh, i like that because i i'm not high on four set this week and i am high on stevie johnson um yet i think i would still probably rather have the uh, no i i think i am gonna actually lean stevie johnson in this matchup i'm gonna go with uh in a standard league oh i didn't see that did you say that it is a standard league no i didn't say it but i'm saying no in a standard league i would i that would swing the pendulum back to four set yeah i'm gonna stay with four set all right keegan in north someplace (laughs) north kaklaki kaklaki who should I start? Travis Kelsey against the Chargers or Jason Witten against the Dolphins? I like it. I like Jason Witten a lot. Char- uh, well, I like Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I'm going to go Kelsey. Yeah, Kelsey. Uh, w- Witten was a consideration for me on start of the week at the tight end position. I ended up going Walker, but Jason Witten was up there. Yeah, so and, and I don't mind either of these guys. I think you'll be okay with both, but Kelsey has a little bit more upside because he's just more involved, yeah. more involved in the offense. And the Chargers so. have not been that great against the tight end this year, so. All right, that does it for today's show. We made it through this week. We, we did got it. through it. You know, the beard will be back on Monday. Yeah. Do, do we get a week off now? Does he do get to do the yeah, show by he's himself? A solo show next week and just uh, Mike and the beard. Yeah. That's and he, you know, he can just muse about beard related facts. Jeremy Hill. <laughs> Jeremy Hill and Kristen Michael. There you go. So, all right. Thank you very much for listening. Be sure to check out those shirts on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can get the uh, Foot Clan Awakens uh, shirt. Hopefully you got one of the uh, Back to the Future ones that just got delivered. That was fun. Oh, they bright, bright beautiful. blue. That's what we got, the bright blue ones. So. Beautiful. All right, thanks again. We will catch you after the Week 11 games. Good luck this week. We'll be rooting for Go all the Go lock those plan. playoff spots in. Oh, yeah. All right, take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.